So, hello everybody. Uh, it's uh, time for microservices again. It's uh, lecture number six or something like that, or five. No, it's lecture number five. We are in winter term uh, 21, 22. And uh, last week we were really proud to actually have a front end written in Angular and connected to a back end where we use Nest and the backend connects to the database and we could query the database for all the palettes we do have. And uh, we could, could we send already? No, yeah, we could send a command and add new data to our database and then we query for it and see it again. It's great. It's unbelievable. It's so cool. And I think I have it running here. Do I? Nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Uh, we did not yet actually do something with it, but fine. So what I show you here in this window is actually uh, Cypress. And today we will go for testing. Um, so to add a new palette to our warehouse, we have to click this add button here and it doesn't work. That's bad. Yeah, it does and then add some, some barcode. We did that before and say, okay, we have product one, we have two, two, and the position is somewhere here. Uh, or rather, it's there. Uh, Yeehaw, we press add and we get a result where this new product is actually shown, so this works. We will run this operation over and over and over again. So because we do actually test driven development, uh, so we go through a scenario and then we, well, develop, we, we program one step after the other of this scenario. And for each new piece of functionality, we rerun all the steps in front of that. And we do that, uh, well, a thousand times or more frequent or even more often. And so um, you really soon get tired of, well, filling in this dialogue data all the time again and again. And therefore you should automate this. Um, so what we need is something like a bot that actually uh, clicks uh, the, the buttons and fills the fields for us. We do not want to do that ourselves, but a bot shall do that. And actually the bot that we are going to use is Cypress. Oh, is there anywhere this name? No, it's not yet here. Okay. Um, and so I will, the first half of the lecture today, show you how Cypress is going to work and how to install this and all these kinds of stuff. And the second half of uh, uh, the, the lecture today, is going to deal with this other great things that are happening everywhere. Uh, I have actually split my screen into three columns and we'll discuss this, um, well, in the second half of the lecture. I actually could stop this by now and because it's, it's too, too, too crowded. So uh, what I actually did is I collapse all these things here uh, I'm in my project Mono Repo A Zindorf, um, where the, the, the uh, Git root of my project is, the GitHub uh, project lives. And then we have had Microshop and Micro Warehouse, and the Micro Warehouse has two subdirectories, one for the front end, one for the back end. Similarly, the Microshop, the second system we are going to implement, will have a front end and a back end. And we should actually test these things. And there are multiple ways to test things. And for example, if you are in the back end, you might want to test this thing using Jest. Uh, this comes with Nest. Nest is a platform that we use for the backends automatically. And it actually provides for you something like, and where is it? Service, 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 service spec. Ah, here it is, app controller spec. 
Um, yeah, control us back. Get rid of this one. Okay. And actually, you get these kinds of, of tests all the time. Uh, I actually have had to adapt this a little bit um, in order to let it work. And actually, I'm looking for an end-to-end -end test. Where do those live? Do you know that? Oh, here in the test. Oh, here it is. Oh, let's have a look at that one. Well, actually, you have all kinds of tests uh, that uh, Nest installs for you. And it actually starts with the, the service. Uh, is there a service test? No, no service test. Just a controller test. Okay, let's have a look at that one. Yeah. It does some things. I, I would like to avoid to discuss it with you because we are not actually actively using this in the course. Um, it actually sets up our the module you are going to test and this is um, the app controller module i think um, and yeah and uh, then it runs something like this oh it's a describe again why hmm. i have no idea uh, and finally it says um, if i go for the app controller call get hello uh, then wait for the result, that this is what they expect does. Um, then I can ask uh, some conditions on what the result should be, uh, which is uh, to be hello course or something like that. And this test actually runs and executes, it's all fine. And you call these tests with, um, <laughs> uh, in package JSON there is a script, um, which says test or test watch or something like that. So we can actually have a terminal uh, that is not yet running anything. Okay, let's stop this things here. It's too much. Uh, get rid of it. Uh, I just closed things I have prepared over the weekend to show for you today and I just stop all these and then we will have a restart. And I go for uh, CD um, micro warehouse and then for the Micro warehouse backend. So I'm in the micro warehouse backend now. Can you see that, guys? Um, 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 Sebastian, could you put my my picture and picture to the top right corner? Of course. Ah, great. Thank you. Where did you show your master? Please. In the last in your your test your controller test, everyone can see your Mongo DB password. I don't have a password in the Mongo test. No, there is a link. You 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 call the yeah. The module and you put it in. I hope I won't will not show the password. But I'm pretty sure I don't do. So what I do is an npm uh, run test and let's have a look. And it does something like that. It executes these tests and okay. So uh, the test I have just shown to you, um, the builder, the ah, go away. Go away, go away, go away, go away. I have no test. Uh, this was the app controller stack. Uh, it actually performs a call to the app controller. The app controller, this thing here, we are in the background. And there we have actually a, a web server and uh, this web server answers to certain URLs. Uh, you can do a get with query and palettes, for example. You can do a post with a command. And you can just say, hey, get slash or nothing. And then you get a response, this app service get hello. Okay. And this single operation, uh, the get hello here, that is what this controller spec actually tests. So I call, uh, I do a, a get and I get a string as a result and that's fine. Okay, 
Um, this is a, a so-called, well, unit test. And it actually, it tests a single unit in, well, isolation from all the other units. And this was meaningful once upon a time when we were developing our applications uh, with multiple people that were each guy or girl were implementing a single block, a single component, a single unit. And then this person would actually test um, the unit that belongs to this person and um, needs its own tests. And all the other units are not yet there and because other people are working in those. And um, so what you need to do to, in order to do a good unit test, you need to mock up uh, or to, to, well, yeah, yes, you need a mock up for all the other components you are collaborating with. I spent quite a time in my use doing these things, doing unit tests for single uh, components of my software the, where I was responsible for, and then having stops and mock-ups for all the other components that are around me. And this was a quote, com complete waste of time. I hate that, it's absolutely meaningless. And um, since we have GitHub, we can actually go for uh, feature-driven development that you can actually have responsibility as one developer uh, for uh, a cross-cutting feature that uh, um, manages the collaboration of multiple components. Um, to test cross-cutting features, you use end-to-end -end tests. This is another kind of test. It's often uh, also called an integration test, where you actually test the collaboration of multiple units. So uh, that is much more interesting. And an uh, E to E end to end test is um, given here in this test directory. I think they actually generate that for you and you just uh, need to add some more things here. So uh, let's go into a little bit more detail of this end to end test. Uh, we have this uh, describe, which is actually a function that is provided by, I think, Jest for you. Uh, it comes from super tests or something like that. Um, I have no idea where super test comes from. Um, and uh, the describe operation gives uh, gets two parameters, actually some text that you are going to print on the screen later on, and a function. This is this weird thing in TypeScript and JavaScript uh, that functions are just usual values of variables. And you can actually pass a function as a parameter. You can, for an actual parameter, you can call a function and pass the return value of that function uh, as an argument, or you can actually pass the code of the function itself. And this is done via this lambda notation here. And this is a function that has no name, and it, but it has no parameters. And the body of that function is uh, within this um, braces. So, and this one is going to end somewhere down here. So this around clothing bracket here is actually the opening, corresponding to this opening bracket uh, of the describe call. So we have one method that gets a name and then a function. Okay. And then actually internally, it will actually set up just an object that contains these things. And when this is done, it will go through the method body. And the method body has um, a call, well, defines a, a constant here. I think I did that. I'm not sure. Uh, then there is this before each function call, which actually adds some information to this test driver object that we are currently constructing, that is uh, created by this describe thing here. And it says um, there is going to be a, number, a list of tests coming. 
And before you create one or execute one of them, uh, please uh, execute the function I'm passing to you here. So we have yet another function that is passed as an argument. And this one actually sets up um, the module that I'm going to test. And it's say, oh yeah, we test the app module, uh, which is our whole uh, nest application. And uh, there is something to do here. I've, actually, I'm, I'm not sure, sure how this actually works. Create a testing module that imports the app module. And it actually does a wrapper around our web server. It does not really start the web server. It just does a wrapper around it that um, you can actually call the operations. Okay. And it does a compile here. So I have no idea where this comes from. Most of this was generated from uh, this uh, nest new or nest creates command at, uh, that we did some three, four weeks ago. Okay. Uh, and it's says, hey, app is my create nest application thing here. And then it does an app dot in it and waits for it. And we will discuss the wait later on. Did this, uh, did I say that last week too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, then there comes tests and the tests, <laughs> they have another function that well, adds a test to function, a test operation to the list of tests that shall be executed. And that is this int function. It gets again a descriptive text and then the actual code to be executed for that test. And that one does return a request, which is actually sending some HTTP request, a browser request to our server. App get HTTP server is the server itself. Then you say, oh, send a get request to flash and expect that the 200 is that is uh, successful and expect that hello course is the result. So this is again pretty close to our uh, unit test. However, um, if this hello does more than this, then we can actually do more. And here I actually do a query palette um, and that expected 200 and the result to do something meaningful. Uh, we actually can run this test. So it is an npm run test colon e to e. And it will actually say console.log result.text. No, it's still running, is it? Yeah, here we are. I put this up a little bit. Come on. Oh, it says hoo, hoo, hoo. Console lock, uh, you see that there is a lot of more functionality of multiple components is actually called. I can actually scroll it this way. Yeah, cool. Uh, um, 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 so it says uh, app controller get query called with palettes at uh, this position here. App service called, builder service called. Um, App controller get query done is a console lock uh, from the app controller get query, blah, 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 blah. You see there are multiple components or modules of our system that are tested through this call. So that is our end-to-end -end call uh, for our system. It's like a user has done this in or initiated this operation in its in her or his uh, or his browser and you get a full well re response reaction of this so it's actually a browser request comes in and i run through all my modules and return some value and this is an integration test that tests the actual collaboration of all the modules that are living in my um backend okay that's great it's it's uh, it's much better than what we have had before but it's well still not what I'm looking for because, well, we are have a front end and a back end, and the real problem is how the front end and the back end collaborate, and we just do not actually test this by now. So I generate some result and I have something that I said okay, I would like to have the result. It could have be a, a JSON structure. I could set it up and said, oh, it should be two palettes and these kinds of stuff. 
I can check that, but I can. this test is not able to see whether our Angular application, our front end, is dealing with this result correctly. So is our front end able to understand the data that I'm sending it? Uh, we, we don't know. So what I actually would like to have is a test that's uh, starting the front end, uh, something in some keys and, and mouse clicks, sends a request to the back end, the back end gets a response, the front end um, shows the value it gets from the back end, and we test whether the value we see is what we expected. That's the full test that tests the collaboration of front end and back end. That is what I'm looking for. And so Sebastian is already uh, saying, oh, that's a bad thing, don't do that. Um, we call that a system test, this is cool, yeah. And uh, so uh, we will do a system test. And oh well, in general, having tests for the front end and for the back end separated, perhaps even unit tests, uh, might be very useful, especially if different people are working at the front end and one guy at the front end, one, another guy at the back end. Uh, then they should actually, well, test their work independently before they actually test the collaboration. Um, so I think it's a really bad idea to split up, um, I have to say this in, in full face, um, it's a really bad idea to split up um, the work on two components um, that collaborate, that call each other and, and, and well, do things together. Uh, and if you have two components that are split together and then you split up the work on these two components on two persons, that's a bad idea. Don't do that. Uh, well, Although software engineering has shown that these courses, a lot of, well, communication between the two people that work on these different components. So if your components work together, the people that work on that components need to work to correspond also uh, in order to, well, say, okay, I'm sending you these kinds. So what parameters, not what fields, your properties do you expect in the JSON object? And then and, and your response, what will this be? And okay, you don't, you know, not yet. Okay, I, I do some assumptions I would like to have. And then oh, finally, oh no, you are sending me something completely different. So I changed my whole code. And mm. so we did this a lot in the 80s and in the 90s. And we don't do that anymore. Usually, if you can avoid it, the problem here is that uh, you need uh, quite some different skills to develop an Angular front end. And uh, yet another set of skills to develop a Nest backend. And not very many people have both of these skills. And therefore, you hire some front end developers, some back end developers, and then you split the work. There's no other way. However, in this course, you are going to become full stack web developers. So you are able to do some front end and some back end. And then you also do the collaboration between those two. And therefore, uh, you actually need something that enables you to test the collaboration of these components. So, do we go with this, Sebastian? Ah, uh, he doesn't agree. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> uh, he, he's not good with it, but he accepts because I'm elder than he. Um, if this was his course, he wouldn't do that. Um, okay. So. Uh, what we want is a test that does the collaboration between our micro warehouse front end and back end. And actually, later on, our warehouse back end will collaborate with the shop back end and say, hey, we have a new product. And then there will be a shop front end. So we will have actually four different, co four different components that are collaborating. And I want to test the collaboration of all these four components in a single test. And that's definitely a system test. And therefore, I do this test uh, in this micro test um, thing. 
um, here up are in the top of our pointitude. So the microchess is now a brother or sister or a sibling of Microshop and Micro Warehouse. So it's a top level directory. And I'm going to, to go there. Um, CD plus 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 CD micro test. No, actually, I'm not going there. So the first thing, um, oh, I'm going to run this system test with Cypress. Cypress is a test environment um, that I'm going to show to you. And actually, I have done put some um links in um the 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 ah, tell it um, in the discord and i'll have a look at that before i show it to you i just check discord discord is not off here is discord uh don't switch and can i show this to you or yeah so why not Yeah. So uh, I did something in so and it says, oh, I need a Cypress project. And I actually, I have no idea what is the minimal surrounding that Cypress needs to be installed. So what I actually did is I did an Angular ng new micro tests command uh, on the top level at the root of my directory. And that was creating the microtest uh, directory and put a lot of Angular stuff in there, which I actually don't need. Yeah. And then I did an npm install Cypress minus minus save dev. Uh, this installs the Cypress environment. And I'll show what's going on um, with Cypress um, soon. And then there is this. Uh, Cypress are, is called by going into node modules dot bin Cypress with parameter open. And because I do not want to type this all the time, I added a script to my package.json. That looks wrong. Yeah, it's in the in the documentation. It's not my fault. It, it looks totally wrong. Yeah. Uh, here we have it. Please. Or you mean the package from the microtest project? Yeah, I mean the. Oh yes, right. I'm wrong. <laughs> I should listen to you. Um, microtest. Yes, thank you. It's too many of those. Uh, package.json. And there I have added this Cypress node module spin Cypress open. Okay, because I have this, I can now. Um, yeah, do an npm run. Yes, you're right. I'm still here in the project mono repo. I have to go to the micro tests directory and then I do an npm run Cypress, which actually calls, tells S npm to execute this line of code, this thing. I could have done this too, but oh, damn it. Here we are. Uh, Chaka. So if I do that, well, actually, Cypress. It's a complete web browser. It is the full Chromium web browser uh, with some extra stuff that allows Cypress to actually automatically uh, type within the web page that you see. So Cypress open is soon. Well, actually, this install thing, that's an extremely, uh, well, bad thing that you need to do and it takes a very very long time so and if you have done this our uh, cypress opens 
Come on. No. Yeah. yeah. I should should be able to to enlarge this, but that does not work. Uh, with a first page or first well user interface um, that gives you a list of all the tests that you might execute. There might be multiple tests, and these are shown here. In your application or in your directory, those tests live in uh, the microtest. This is our project where we have well. Blah, blah, blah install we did this install libraries no we did uh, we did this open and in the moment you actually do open cypress it creates a cypress um directory and within the cypress directory there is something fixtures uh i have didn't need it by now there is integration there is what we go there's plugins i didn't use it by now and support something else i have no idea in the integration our directory there is some examples that you actually can use for copy paste so the simple to do spec json shows you so what is the usual thing that you do when you write a cypress test uh, bah, 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 and you do a sci visit after all then you do some sci get and these kinds of stuff there is advanced tests these are here you can actually well uh, these tests demonstrate certain uh, capabilities of cypress and if you look for some advice or how do i do actually test these piece of things you will find examples in here uh, i actually don't use it what i actually did is i were writing this warehouse front end dot spec and uh, oh, that one is not too complicated um and actually i would like to well make it empty first so um because um then i can show you a little bit more so it actually it says again this describe thing which actually creates a list of actual tests and then hands this list over to Cypress in order to execute those tests. And um, it has a name here and then there is this function, this lambda again, this callback. And here is actually where these test steps are generated or, or created. If I tell Cypress to actually, so here I have to do spec. I could actually run that. Uh, you might do that for, for getting well acquainted with this. There are all these other examples. I close this here. And here is my warehouse front end spec. And I did a TypeScript thing. And in order to be allowed to do this TypeScript thing, the documentation tells me you have to go into the tsconfig JSON. I have no idea why. Uh, you actually go for the Cypress documentation and it tells you to do it this way. And where do I find the Cypress? And that was in the Discord, actually. Cypress documentation. Yep, go there. Here we are. And here it says all these things are and how it works. And here's getting started, installing Cypress and mm, no 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 mm -hmm. here is this npm install cypress command that we just had and then it says uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, still more still more opening cypress is dot node modules bin cypress open yeah great or if you have another well if you run on Mac or Linux, you, you need was something else. And then you get this thing here. That is the, the first thing with the integration tests. And then it says, oh, yeah, you have to write this spec.gs. Then you search for, oh, no, I would like to do it with TypeScript. Yeah. And then it says, OK, yeah, you need to install TypeScript. We do not need because Angular did that for us. And then you go for the tsconfig.json, and there this line of code is important. 
that says, oh, please use the types that are provided by Cypress hmm. or something like that. And if you do that, and here we are, and I did that. It says types Cypress and the other stuff is coming from Angular. I have no idea what it is good for. Uh, then it actually works and you can write your um, tests, your system tests in TypeScript and you get some more completion and, and better type checking uh, if you do it in TypeScript and not in um, JavaScript. Okay, so here we are. Yeah, and where's my Cypress? I say, oh yeah, I would like to open these one. No, I would like to execute this one. And he said, oh, yeah, it's okay. Do it. Then it actually starts the actual browser that is going to be used for testing. And it tries to run your warehouse front end spec TS thing. And so it's, why isn't warehouse front end after all? It should be something like system. Eh, damn it. Uh, and it says, no, this one contains no test. Okay, let's change that. And yeah, that's a bad thing. So let's uh, uncomment the very first test here. And actually, I like that one here. And it's control K, control U. Uh, and I just store this. And as soon as I store this, that guy automatically 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 restarts yeah and it says no i cannot do the side visit so what what did i do i said the very first step I, this is a our test that our um, tests currently the warehouse and this test visits the warehouse front end and it does so by using an internal object, which is called Psi. So this is a Cypress object that provides the Cypress functionality. And that has a withered operation. And then you can actually pass a URL. And then it actually opens a browser window with this URL. After all. So HTTP localhost for 1200 4200 is actually our angular application and that one is not yet started so let's start it i go for give me a terminal so this is the cypress terminal i split it i get rid of this one because we will have not enough place for that i'm in the monorepo center i go for my coach warehouse i go for the micro warehouse front end and i do an npm run start that will start my angular front yeehaw this takes some time What's the time right now? Oh my God, where's all this time going? So it's actually you now running here and it looks fine. And so this is my usual browser. I go back for the Cypress browser, that one. I try a restart of my test. Hey, here we are. Here you see our micro warehouse. And it has a store task, pick task, everything you would like. And here you see this visits our warehouse test, visits the warehouse front end. This is the very first test step that we have actually added. And then there's this test body. And actually it says, okay, first we did this one and then we got that result. And after that, it looked like something. DOM snapshot, no request, response. I can actually have a little bit debugging information that is provided here. Okay. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. So let's have one more. So side of the has now just opened my thing here. 
and I do err. It's a control K, control U. Something I add a new tab. So this one says my test clicks on store tabs and why is this in uppercase? That doesn't make sense at all. Visits clicks on store tasks. So how do I click on a button? All right, here it is. I have uh, this, I would like to click on this button here. And how do I actually do that? Well, I have to actually query the DOM tree. So DOM tree, what is this? Did I talk to you to the DOM tree? Oh my God. Behind the scene of this, um, is a, a parser tree that is, shows the structure of this web page. And if you press F12 in your browser, uh, you can see it. So it has a, an HTML thing that has some head structure and it has a body. The body is a diff, uh, which has a diff, which has a diff, which has the diff, uh, diff? which has a header, which has a span, which has something like that, and so on. And this is actually a button. So there is a, a structure uh, that represents the structure of these things, and this is living in your browser. And this structure is called the domain object model of our HTML page or the DOM tree. So it's actually an abstract syntax tree that represents the structure. And to click, and you can actually, uh, your Cypress test has access to this inner tree uh, that lives in your browser. And actually what your browser does, it, it runs through this tree and renders this, this tree to the screen to show you what you see actually. And let's have this a little bit, just more like this. Okay, cool. Okay, that's this, that is this, uh, and still, uh, so how do I actually get this store task button here? I actually would like to close this because otherwise this is too small. And we go here. What I do is I ask the Cypress to get something. And then I give it the uh, uh, query a selector. The official name is a selector. Uh, that is, say, uh, please walk through the DOM tree and find an element that has a certain property. You can ask for a text. Mm, not a good idea. Uh, you can ask for objects of a certain type, uh, like button or diff or paragraph or something like that. Or you can ask for objects that have a certain ID. So. And that is what I do. Uh, and that is what this hashtag here is about. If you put a hashtag in front of here, then you ask for an object with an ID. If you put a dot here, you ask for something with a certain class, uh, with a CSS class, a, a, a styling class. Uh, and I have no idea. This one asks for uh, some an HTML tag. So what we would like is something with an ID. That is the usual thing that you do. Come on. So, uh, and this ID, where does this come from? Um, pum, 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 pum. So our, yeah. So we have just visited localhost for T200. And then we go for, mm -hmm, Warehouse, front end, spec integration. Oh my God. Um, mm -hmm. No, Cypress, microtests. Uh, okay. I go for the micro warehouse, the front end, the source, the app, are, and there for the app component HTML. Uh, yeah, why not? Well, actually, uh, what we need to go for is the home component. Um, I know that because I have been there yesterday. And uh, so this is the HTML template for the home component. If you recall uh, our page, 
has uh, initially uh, looks like this, and the top line here is belonging to the app component, and then it has here a router outlet or something like that, and then it starts by uh, rendering the home component, and the home component has these two buttons, and the home component is actually specified in this file home component HTML, and it says, oh yes, I have a row, and there is a column in there, and there is this uh, href, uh, this reference, this link, this HTML link, uh, hyperlink, and uh, introduced by this async, it is rendered like a button in primary colors, and it has a router link, store task, which is the action that is executed or where this hyperlink points to. And this is what I added yesterday. It has a store task button in here. So in order to let Cypress find your button, you give it a name. And you do this with this ID attribute in here. And actually, you have to do that in your homework this week. So please have a look at this. And actually, I did not yet give a name to this button because my test did not yet try to call it. So I give it a name, and note the name is just store task button. It has no hashtag in front of it. In order to actually then refer to this name, Chucker, uh, go away, go away, uh, I can then actually add the hashtag, and then this get call go through the domain object model of my actual current page and then looks for some element that has this ID and then retrieve that thing. Uh, and once this has been done, uh, uh, this element is well delivered and then you can actually call, click on it in order to click it. Hey, that's cool. And then you would like to test, did it work or did it not work? And uh, therefore, once we click on store task, we get something, a list of something here. This one looks like an error. I have no idea why. Oh, yes, I have an idea why. Um, and uh, what we at least would like to know, oh, are we on the right page? And there's this warehouse pallets text showing up here. So I said, oh, uh, I use another operation. I want that the page that is currently showing contains the text warehouse pallets somewhere. And I can ask Sai, please check that this one is true. Okay, and that is my second test. Okay, um, we should get rid of this uh, error down there. I think so. Uh, here. Yeah. Uh, so actually, our warehouse pallet should show the list of existing um, pallets. And therefore, it actually, yeah, let's have a look at it. Where does this happen? So it's the home, no, it's not the home component. Uh, it's actually, um, uh, the, the, the store task thing, and there the uh, store task component ts it on ng init uh, so on loading or displaying the component it does an http get to our localhost 3000 to our nest server that one is not yet running so this one will fail and so this is what happens uh oh here uh we write the error to store task string which is rendered in our page and so, yeah, that did not work. Uh, so let it, uh, let's it let change this. And we actually just split this one again. And then we go for, come on. Then we go for a micro warehouse. And then we go for a micro warehouse backend. Can you still read that? It's hard for me, <laughs> but okay. I can't do anything about it. And we do an npm run start, and uh, we just start the backend. And have a look at it. Yeah, it looks great. 
successfully started. It says successfully started, if you can read that. Cool. So if I go for my front end thing here and rerun our test, it checks, yeah, all those tabs are working. And uh, and here we have now the list of palettes that are already in the database. And uh, here is some, some information I'm printing just to see whether it works. And this is debug output that should go away later on. Okay, so now I would like to press that button. Hey, and you already may uh, have an idea how to do this. I go for uh, mm, 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 store task HTML and find that button and add an ID for this. So this is my add button. Or there's router link. Go to add palette. Great, and I add an ID for that. Cool. So and then I can actually call this, and that is another step in my test. It's K control U. It says it please my test clicks on the add palette button. So I do a sci get add button click and test whether store new palette is shown. I put this down and get the run up and the tests are already running. So automatically when I store the test file, um, um, changes to the test file, uh, Cypress reruns all the tests. So here I am. Uh, I have already, I can actually go back here and say, okay, what was the, the outcome here? Uh, yeah, this was loading this thing. Uh, this was uh, hmm, clicking on store tasks, and then we get something like that. And then I'm in the warehouse palette. So you can actually see all the steps that the test has executed. Any call to some operation that is provided by this Cypress object, and uh, can actually see what was the state at that point in time. And then you see that we were somewhere here and that we test the store new palette and that was successful and that's here. Oh, cool. That's nice. And actually, uh, close this, close this, close this. Okay. So I would now like to fill barcode product amount or location with some data. Okay. Um, hum, hum, hum. And this is done by this test here, which is K control U. I do a sci get barcode input, the object with the ID barcode input, and then I call type and then a string. Let's first do this. Hey, ooh, this was too fast. Um, let's go for this state, no, for that state, no, uh, ah, yeah, for that state. Here, we were actually in that page, obviously, then I was typing C1. Uh, so Cypress 01 is now my palette type, my palette barcode, and I did the product ID, and I did location input, and I did a uh, click on add palette, and as a result, I did a post and 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 this was the result that was returned. And then it says, oh, it should contain. Uh, it should do this get, and that was something. There was something. Oh, there's something happening in between these two steps. This was the post. Here I get the result, and you see there is not yet the list. And this is because, well, to show the list, Angular is calling our nest server. Please send me the list of palettes. And this is a time consuming task. And we do not wait, but we would like to show uh, the parts that we, of the page that we already know about to our user. And when the request gives us the response, then we add uh, the data for the response. And um, therefore, we use this uh, wait thing. No, I, I, yeah, we, we have a look at that uh, to make this working. Um, mm -hmm. Let's have a look at this one. 
Um, and we go for the Thor task and we go for mm -hmm, add palette, uh, add palette component HTML. Uh, that is something that you need to extend uh, compared to the code we had last week. We need, of course, all these IDs. We need an ID for the barcode, the product input, uh, the amount input, and the palette button, and the add palette button, and the location input. They all need these IDs in order to give Cypress access to these things. And uh, then we call this one here, and therefore we go for uh, the operation here, which actually does uh, tell the router go for the store tasks thing. So we go back to store tasks, and uh, there we go for the store task component. Component, yes, here we are. So because the store task component is shown to the user again, it runs ng on init again. And so it does an HTTP get to our nest server and asks, uh, does a query on pallets. And uh, so this query will take a long time. This is input output operation. It is communication between multiple programs and or processes. And so, well, uh, we would not like, so if this takes about a second or something like that, uh, and this is easily happening, uh, then you would not like that your browser is, well, waiting, showing a sand clock before the result, until the result comes, but you would like to render the things that you have already. And then when the result comes later, we would like to send it to us. In Angular, I understand that you do this with a subscribe. Uh, I think I have shown this last week with a uh, to promise and then an async await. Um, however, um, to use async await, which is a, a somehow recent uh, language element of TypeScript or JavaScript, um, you need to, well, your framework need to be prepared for that. And it seems that Angular is not ready for that yet. And so it's not a good idea to use await in here in ng on it. Is this good for you? Yes, ah, yeah. Absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. So it and that is because actually Angular is 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 really old. Or probably. <laughs> and they did not really adapt to this new concept of uh, as in await. However, um you what you do is uh, when you run this request, uh, you tell a hey, as soon if, uh, as as uh, the result comes, please here is a function that shall be executed, and the function that it shall be executed as soon as the result comes is provided in the content of this subscribe. Yeah, actually, I provide. Two functions. I re, uh, one function, the first function here is the if it works. So if it comes back and with no error, uh, then I call the function that has one parameter, and I call this parameter answer. And there's this lambda thing here, and uh, the body of that function is call this dot handle query response with uh, this parameter. So. Um, what it says, if it succeeds, and if there is a response, call handle query response. This is another function down here. And, um, and then do something. And we have a look at that. Um, but actually, no. If it does not work, if there is an error re uh, returned by this uh, request, uh, then put the error into the store task string and we are done. So this is one line of code. So usually in the Lambda you have something like uh, curly brackets and a, a whole sequence of statements. If you have only one, it's okay to, to omit the curly brackets. We should have them anyhow, should we? Uh, 
Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So on success, so we have done this on ng init, initiates this request, and then it returns. We are done. We render the page, we show it to the user. The, then there is this, our backend is, is querying the database, doing a lot, transforming JSON data, send it back to us. Subscribe is called, or the answer operation is called, so handle re query response is called. Uh, we get an answer. We, uh, mm -hmm. The answer has a list of JSON objects in its result, and uh, these are build events. And uh, then for each of these build events, we ask for the payload, and we know that that should be pellets. And then we have this this dot pellet thing uh, uh, that is our variable up here. There's this the variable up here, and there we push all the pellets into it, and then we are done. Okay, so that is uh, why our test. Our test, our test, our test is well initially not showing something here. So if I put go here and go finally here, it comes and um, the test loads this page and it has not yet and does a snapshot of this, a screen dump after all. Uh, and we see that the list is still empty because we do not yet have it. Then this request is executed some milliseconds later, it comes back and uh, we see the content of it. So, and then this is get thing here and we actually have to look in the test. Hey, this is so damn complicated. And well, it's easy to write down when you know how it works. However, uh, it's hard to do actually. So we were doing this scigate barcode input type, 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 Add palette and click. Up to here, actually, we were well, acting on the page like a bot that were filling the page. And now we test, oh, did it work? So when we click on the add palette thing, uh, the command is sent to the database, and our Angular application is routed to our um, store tasks page. And uh, so, what we would like to know is, in the store task page, does this new palette show up? The palette that we have just added. And this new palette will show up after the ng on it has done the request to please give the current list of palettes. And that request has sent us the list of the three palettes we know about. And uh, then we um, run this handle re response add the three pellets to the list of pellets, and then it's rendered on our screen. And this will take some time. And our test is probably faster than uh, our application. So it will try to find, is this contains true, uh, before actually this thing comes back. I have to say more here about this. It says, oh, please get, uh, something with the ID that is uh, Psi01. So how did this magic happen? Um, I have to look for the store task component HTML. This is how this is rendered. And this is how this list is rendered. There was this ng4, you know that, that goes with uh, the variable pal to all the list of our palettes is left in the component. Oh my god. Poo. And then it says, okay, PAL amount, PAL product, and PAL location in different colors. And uh, the store task string is, on the, in, is below. And here, in this first line where the ng4 lives, uh, the div component um, that contains, so the ng4 creates copies of the inner things here for each of the palettes. No, no, it creates a copy of the whole thing for each of the palettes. And uh, each of this, I added an ID pack, uh, flag 
Uh, so this is the idea reboot shall be uh, the palette barcode. And uh, the columns here is uh, please assign this value. So the ID attribute of the copy that is going to be created will be the content of this parallel uh, variable and then the barcode field. Okay, yeah, this is the way you do that. Oh my God. Okay, so multiple things going on. Let's just re-execute this thing here. So uh, here it actually is, there is this line and we could actually say, come on, F1, F12. And then I say, oh, please select uh, this thing here. And then I see it in my browser. I can actually do enlarge this. Yeah, I can. Okay, now you didn't see even less than before. And there is something I do not know about, but this is the whole line, and it should have an ID equals 501. That one did work. And uh, the other one, uh -huh, go here, go here. This is the 8, and then you go up a little bit to this one. This is the whole line, and this has pallet 042. Hey, that one, that one did work. Great. Cool. Have this one. Go away. Here we do it. So, and there's still this miracle in here that uh, when I did this palette thing, this was no thing, I did this click and then it did a post internally and it did a get. Here we get the result page. If on that page I already asked this get an object with hashtag sci01, it won't work. We actually have to wait until uh, we get the response from our backend. And somehow Cypress does this. So actually, and that is the point that I wanted to tell you now, and then the time is gone, is um, if you did these operations, especially the testing operations, um, but also the get operation here. Uh, well, actually, Cypress run them with something like an await internally. So it loads, or here it actually loads the page, and then I do this get store task button here, and and probably the page is not yet readily rendered. So what this sci get actually does. It goes through the DOM tree and looks for the, the element I'm looking for. And it doesn't find it. It says, oh, perhaps I'm too fast. It waits for some milliseconds and then does another one. And then if it did, still doesn't find it, it again waits some 10 or 20 milliseconds and then it does another one. And so on and so on. So uh, the, sci, the this sci get sign 01 thing, uh, as soon as the store task component is rendered and the list is not yet there, it tries to find something with this ID. It doesn't succeed, it waits. It does again, it doesn't succeed, it waits. Eventually, our backend server responds to the palettes, we edit, we re-render it, it's shown to you, and at that point in time, so I get now it succeeds, and then it does this contains check, and then we are done. So when you fail finally, let's have a seven here. You will see, oh, it's, it's here. It's, it's, did you see that it was spinning for some time? That says, oh, I have identified this sci get something thing, but the contains thing, that the contains here didn't work. And there's a timed out, we're trying after four seconds. He tries for four seconds to find this seven that I'm looking for. So it is able to find or uh, to do this get Cypress 01, that works. And this is the blue thing is that 
thing that has been delivered. And then it tries to do this contain seven, but our Cypress 01 only has a six and a red shoes and a front row. So contain seven is going to fail. And then he says, oh, I'm probably just too fast. And then he does several retries for four seconds. And then he said, no, I'm giving up. It's not going to come any longer. I have waited for four seconds. Uh, I'm done. And then it actually throws an exception and shows you, oh, here in the code, no, sorry, that one is not working. Oh, that's a pretty cool and very smart behavior of Cypress um, that you, first of all, need to know about and second, you can rely on. Uh, so you are able to say, oh, yeah, please do that, do that, do that, check for this, check for this. And uh, each of these steps is going to wait uh, until your application is in a state where you can actually do that. And um, so you can, well, you, you do not need to deal with timing issues um, while using Cypress, or Cypress deals with this for you. That's a cool thing. Okay, here we are. Um, and time is over. Damn, there was... This was planned for the very first half of our lecture today. We will need another, another uh, week um, to, to get in more details on, on, on um, uh, I think, uh, await stuff next week. Okay, sorry for that. So, here we are. Uh, assignment for this week, and Maximilian is listening, um, is... Please set up Cypress and just do the same test that I have done with your application. So let Cypress run this kind, these steps that is start the application, visit uh, on the home page, go for the store tasks page, um, do an add palette, fill the form, uh, click the add button, and uh, check whether the palette is actually showing up are on your store task page. These steps shall be done. And uh, so all these installation stuff and these things I have seen. I, I hope I didn't forget any step that is necessary to, to make this working. But uh, yeah, I think I have covered it pretty much all. Um, do not forget to, to add this types information to tsconfig.js or tsconfig.json. That's an important step that was costing me an hour yesterday. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, thank you for your attention. So next week, so we now have a test. And um, so the, what we do next week is um, we will get rid of the dummy data that we have added to our database in order to have something to show in, uh, in at the very beginning. So next week we will actually get rid of these two and replace this by Cypress tests. That fill, so we will start our system with an empty database and then we will actually add the two pallets or dummy data through Cypress and through the front end. And when we have achieved that, we will discuss a little bit of the other great stuff. And then we are ready to go for um, communication between the warehouse backend and the shop backend. That's the next step to be implemented next week, hopefully. Okay, thank you for your attention and see you next week. And on Wednesday, Thursday, on Thursday, uh, for the uh, uh, presentations of your solutions. Thank you for your attention.